Did you know you can create tons of Amazon PPC campaigns in minutes instead of hours? In this video, we're going to show you how to do that using Amazon Bulk Sheets. Now, Bulk Sheets are spreadsheets, and we use one of our favorite tools, Google Sheets, to do this. Bulk Sheets are spreadsheets where you can upload tons of campaigns really, really fast. We do this using our favorite spreadsheet tools, whether it be Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. We're going to use Google Sheets in this video. That is what I like to use the most. So in this video, you will learn how to launch Amazon PPC campaigns faster and more efficiently. So let's get into it. So in the bulk sheets portal, they're going to teach you exactly what you need to do to launch these different campaigns. So I'm going to get into it. I'm just going to go down to this create campaign section because that's what we're learning in this video today. So as I'm scrolling through this, I'll just scroll through pretty quickly. You can go to this. I'll put this in the description below, but this is going to tell you exactly how you need to set up each column. And I'm just going to teach you directly in the spreadsheet. But this is where you're going to come learn all about sponsored products, sponsored brand and sponsored display. We're going to focus just on sponsored products in this video, and I'll get into sponsored brands and display in another video. So jumping into it, they're going to show everything we need to know about each column in the campaigns. So what I did was I created a file just for you guys in this video, and I'll put this in the description so you could copy it and use it to launch your own campaigns. Now, basically what you're going to see is all these different columns. And this is exactly what Amazon needs to get these campaigns started. They're going to read the columns, take what you put in them and launch your campaigns very quick, very easy. So as you see here, these are all sponsored products. So that first row is going to be sponsored product. This entity column is going to cover if it's a campaign, if it's an ad group product ad keyword, a campaign is where all your ad groups are held. And then this bidding adjustment, that's a column where you could apply a certain bidding adjustment at the top of the page on Amazon or on the product pages. So this ad group is where all your keywords and product targets are going to be held and where your actual product ads are going to be held. So for the campaign column, we're going to get into your campaign naming convention first. Now, what I like to do is stick to the same naming convention. So what I do is I give it a product identifier. What product is going to be in this campaign? I only run one of my products per campaign, and then I'm going to put whether it is sponsored product, sponsored brand or sponsored display. So it'll be SP for sponsored products. So this GP at the beginning is for garlic press because that's the product that I just did research on and I'm launching campaigns for it. This is just for the video. I'm not actually launching campaigns for garlic press, but I'm gonna use that as an example. So GP is my product identifier for garlic press. Then I'm gonna get into SP for sponsored products, space dash space again. Then I'm gonna go and put the match type. I only like to run one match type per campaign. So it could be exact, broad, phrase, auto, category targeting, product targeting, whatever that match type is. And then I'm going to go space dash space again. Then I want to put the purpose of the campaign. Now for, for this one, I just, this is just a performance campaign going after my target a cost, right? So I'm just going to put performance. Some of the other examples I use are ranking branded defensive discovery. Those are just some of the ones that I use. And then we go space dash space again. And then I like to put the date in there, even though the date shows up in campaign manager, when you're optimizing in bulk files, it's really nice to know the date of each campaign. It's a really quick way to see when exactly you launch those campaigns. All right. And then I'll just put a number at the end to indicate this is number one campaign. This is number two. This is number three. All right. So getting into it more in that campaign column, you need the campaign ID and then you're going to follow everything else here. You'll need the campaign name here. You're going to need the start date over here. You're going to need what kind of targeting type if it's manual or auto, and then you're going to make sure it's enabled, right? If you put pause, then it's just going to launch the campaign paused. We want to enable it. We want to get this campaign going. Then you have a daily budget. And as I scroll over to the right here, you're going to see your bidding strategy. Now there is fixed bids, dynamic bids up and down or dynamic bids down only. Those are the three. I usually stick to fixed bids or dynamic bids down only for most of my campaigns. Now you have this other column down here, which is going to cover that bidding adjustment. Now what that bidding adjustment was, like I said before, it allows you to put what we call it is a bid modifier on certain placements on Amazon, right? So what we could do is Amazon allows us to increase our bid if we want to show up more on the top of search or on Amazon product listing pages. So that's where you'll go ahead and add that. So I just want to add this in here and I only added it to a couple campaigns here. So you'll see this top campaign has the placement top. So this is me putting a placement top. Here's the percentage. So I'm putting hundred percent bid increase at the top of search here. And then for this next campaign, I have the product placement and then I'm putting 50% here. So if you want to add that same placement to multiple campaigns, you'll just need to add a row. Like say, if I want to add placement top to this one, 
I'm just going to add a row below. I'm going to go ahead and copy this column here, paste it over here. Then I just need to make sure that my, I copy and paste control C control V to make sure I paste the right campaign name. Cause I don't want this old campaign. Cause then it's going to add it to that. Right? So now the campaign name matches and now I have a top of search and a product bid adjustment here. And I do need to switch to the same bidding strategy as the campaign. That is very important. So the entire campaign needs the same bidding strategy. You can't do bidding strategy on different placements. Okay. So now I have 50% and hundred percent on this campaign. Now the next column that we're going to look at is the ad group column. Now you can have multiple ad groups per campaign, but what I like to do is just stick with one ad group per campaign. And the reason behind that is because that budget over here is set at the campaign level. But what I've noticed, if you have multiple ad groups in a campaign, Amazon will not divvy up your spend evenly across those ad groups. So until they allow us to set the budget at the ad group level, we're going to stick with one ad group per campaign. Now getting into the next section here, we have product ad. Now you could have the minimum of one product in a campaign. What I like to do is really base it on what the products are. Usually I stick with one parent listing per campaign. So if I have, let's say a garlic press, but I have a one pack, two pack, three pack, you could add all of them to the campaign, or let's just say I'm selling a t-shirt and I have white, red, blue, and people are really searching for just t-shirt. I'll put all of those in a campaign together. Now, once I figure out which one's the best product that's giving me the best results and getting people into my campaign, I might pause the other ones later and leave those in there. All right. And for that column, all you need to do is put, you'll put the campaign name and you'll put the ad group name from the ad group column above. So you have to have both of those and coming over, you need to put enabled, you need to put the SKU. Now the SKU is very important and you'll get that directly from your manage inventory screen and you can see the SKU of each campaign. You could add 10 SKUs in here. You could do one SKU. You could do more than that, right? There's tons of SKUs you could add per campaign. Now scrolling over, that's all we need to add, right? We don't need to add anything past the SKU. And then that next row is when we're going to really start to get into things into what the ads are going after, right? We can go after keywords. We can go after product targets, right? This is with sponsored products, but keywords are product targets. So you see this one's a keyword. So same thing, we're gonna have the create, this operation column is very important and that you need to put create when you're creating campaigns. When you're updating campaigns, you just put the word update, which we'll get into in other videos. Now this column, you'll have the campaign ID and the ad group ID once again, and then we'll go through it and then you'll see, let's just highlight this whole column for you. And then you're gonna see enabled and then we're also gonna have the keyword text and the bid columns where we need to add it in there. Now in the match type. So we're going to have, this is an exact match keyword going after garlic press. And I'm going to put my bid at 67 cents and that's all I need in this campaign. And then what I like to do is run about five targets max per campaign. So as you see in this campaign, I have five targets in here. And then my next campaign, I have five targets. I don't like to do more than five targets per campaign. That's just where I found the best performance. When you get tons and tons and tons of keywords in a campaign, I just don't see them getting a good amount of impression share and spend share across the entire campaign. So I like to stick with around five targets per campaign. And sometimes I'll even run single keyword campaigns, right? If I'm going after garlic press, which is going to be hundreds of thousands of searches a month, I may even delete these, relaunch these ones into a new campaign and just stick with a single keyword campaign, right? So if I go ahead and delete these rows now, this campaign is a single keyword campaign going after only garlic press right here. So this row now single keyword campaign going after garlic press, which is going to be my main keyword. Now, when you do that, you have a lot more control. You have the bids, you have the budgets and the placements all on that one single keyword level. All right. So I explained the bidding adjustments, the keywords, we'll get into a little bit more here. And in this file, I also have some product targets that you could launch. So if we scroll down, here's the product targeting column. So you can go after these product targets, which are right now they're just garlic press, you know, ASINs. So I have about five per campaign and that'll go in the product targeting column here, right? Just where, like there was a keyword text column. Here's the product targeting column over here. You don't need to worry about all these extra columns to the right. You could even just delete those. Those are for existing campaigns that already have data. All right. So scrolling back down, those are all the product targets. And then let's scroll back over to the left here. So at the bottom here, we're going to have some auto campaigns. Now these auto campaigns are a little bit different. And what you're going to see is I have the different naming conventions that I use. And as we scroll to the right, you're going to see that now the match or the targeting type is auto instead of manual. And then we have the budget. It's going to be the same thing. And then 
for the product targeting column, it's going to be for automatic targeting group types. There's close match, loose match, substitutes, and complements. And you can launch them all in one campaign. What I tend to do is actually only launch one of these per campaign and pause the other three. And you may not be able to do this in the new bulk sheets. So what you could do is just launch all four and then just go ahead and pause them once you launch them. And so you'll have one campaign with close match, one campaign with loose match, one campaign with compliments, and one campaign with substitutes. And that's where I found to really get the best performance out of all my auto campaigns, because now I have the control on the automatic targeting group level, and I have the control of the bids, the budgets, and the placements all in that one targeting group, and I could scale them separately and just really pull the best performance out of those. All right, so this is my explanation on how to launch sponsored product campaigns very, very quickly. And let's say I want to launch more. I just copy the data, right? This from campaign down to keyword. And then I could just paste them again, change the campaign name, change the, the SKU if I need to, change the targets inside the campaign. Simple as that. And I can launch thousands of campaigns at a time if that's what I want to do. All right. So this is exactly how you're going to launch your sponsored product campaigns in a bulk file. Now, what you're going to do is once you get them there, once you pull them out of here, you're going to download this file, whether you're using Google Sheets or if you're using you know, Excel, you're going to go Microsoft Excel. We could download it just like that. And then you're going to get into your campaign manager, jump right back into where you were, go to this choose file section. You'll find the file that you want to upload, upload that file, and then go ahead and once you just choose it, you hit upload and then you'll see it upload and you'll see finish successfully down here if there wasn't any issues at all. All right. And I'll make another video about solving some issues. If I see some comments down below about you running into some issues, I'll make a quick video on exactly how to fix that. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Stick around and I'm going to be launching new videos every single week on everything about Amazon and how to get the best performance out of your Amazon products.